Hello and welcome to the second Physics 121 pre-lecture video clip. Today we're going to be talking about one-dimensional kinematics, special case of constant acceleration. So to remind you about uh, con kinematics, we have the position, velocity, and acceleration. And of course these are variables or functions of time. X, V, and A. So suppose we have a position x and we want to calculate the velocity and then in turn calculate the acceleration. So we have a way to do this from the definition. The velocity is equal to the time derivative of the position, dx dt. So given the position as a function of time, we can calculate the velocity by taking a derivative. Likewise, acceleration is dv dt. Given the velocity as a function of time, we can calculate the acceleration by taking a derivative. Now suppose that we want to go the other direction. Given a, we want to calculate the v and then calculate x. In other words, given the acceleration, calculate the velocity and then calculate the position. So since we took a derivative before, in order to go the other direction, we're going to, have to do the opposite. We're going to, have to take an integral. The integral of the acceleration as a function of time integrated over time. And I put the prime here to indicate that I'm taking a definite integral from some time zero to some time t. This works in general. Likewise, if I want to calculate the position, I take another integral, only now I integrate the velocity, again as a function of time dt, where I'm going to integrate from zero to time t. So this works in general, but now I want to consider the special case where I have a special kind of motion where I have constant acceleration. This is a case that we're going to see over and over again. Constant acceleration. So in this case I'm given that the acceleration is equal to some fixed constant. It doesn't change as a function of time. So now in order to calculate the velocity I take an integral. The good news is that taking the integral of a constant expression is easy. It's just a times t. Of course, there's a fixed constant of integration. I'll call that constant v naught. Likewise, if I want to calculate the position as a function of time, I just have to integrate my expression for the velocity. So we integrate a t, we get one half a t squared. We integrate the velocity, we get v naught times t, and again some constant which I'll call x naught. So I've got three expressions for acceleration, velocity, and position that I've calculated by integrating uh, the acceleration and then in turn integrating the velocity. So I get these three expressions for one-dimensional kinematics of constant acceleration. Three equations, these are the only equations you ever need do any problem with constant acceleration. A is equal to a constant, V is equal to V naught plus A T, and X is equal to X naught plus V naught T plus one half A T squared, where X naught is the position at time T equals zero, and V naught is the velocity at time T equals zero. And to remind you, this is a special case. You can only use this when the, these equations when the acceleration is constant. These equations cannot be used in general. They can only be used in the face of constant acceleration. So let's look at the kinematics of uh, the special case of acceleration, uh, constant acceleration, uh, in terms of what uh, the uh, time variability is of the various different properties. So we'll start with the acceleration, which we know is constant. So if I want to make a plot of the acceleration as a function of time, a versus t. Since it's constant, it's just a flat line, zero slope. Likewise, if I want to uh, calculate what, uh, make a plot of the velocity, I've got this expression, which is v naught plus at, which is linear in time. So again, if I plot now the velocity as a function of time, I expect a linear function, a straight line with a constant slope. That's the indication of constant acceleration. It's linear, and the slope tells you the acceleration. The intercept tells you v naught. Finally, I've got the position, which is now quadratic as a function of time. 
x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. So a quadratic function, a position as a function of time, will be in the shape of a parabola. A parabolic function. So again, I'm plotting position here as a function of time. And in this case, it's curved, the curvature tells you about the sign of the acceleration. If it's curved up, then that corresponds to a positive acceleration. And if it's curved down, it's negative. Note again that the intercept corresponds to the constant, x naught. So we get three characteristic shapes of the kinematic plots as a function of position. The acceleration is flat. The velocity is linear with slope a and the position is quadratic with a curvature that indicates that the acceleration is positive or negative.